Welcome guys to your 24th physics video and in this video I'm going to talk to you guys about momentum and vector addition because not only can you use vector addition when adding forces together but you can also use it when adding momentum together to prove the law of conservation of momentum. It's pretty cool and as an example I'm going to talk to you guys about the pool example because you remember a couple videos ago I said that whenever you guys were playing pool then what you needed to do was you needed to hit the eight ball into a pocket and then whenever you do that all of the pretty much energy and momentum gets transferred to the eight ball from the cue ball. Well the science was correct in that one and we figured out the calculation but it wasn't a really good realistic example of what happens because in real life the cue ball keeps moving a little bit. So let me go ahead and show you guys a more realistic example. So say you have your eight ball right there and of course at first whenever you hit the cue ball the eight ball is just standing still. That's the one we want to put into a pocket. So before the collision the eight ball since it's not moving has a momentum of zero kilograms times meters per second. Now the cue ball down here I'll write a C on it. This is the one that's flinging across the table with a high rate of speed. So we'll just go ahead and make up a momentum for this and as soon as you hit the cue ball we'll say that it has a momentum of 10 kilograms times meter per second. Now what it's going to do is it's going to crash into the eight ball and hopefully this eight ball goes into you know whatever pocket you want it to. So whenever this happens if you ever played pool in real life your cue ball after the collision it doesn't come to an automatic stop what happens is it rolls slowly away and hopefully this eight ball goes into a pocket like over here or something so let me go ahead and show that so this on the left hand side is before the collision or as soon as you hit the cue ball now after the collision it usually looks something like this the eight ball goes we'll, we'll say the pocket you're aiming for is to the top right the eight ball goes flying over here with a high rate of uh, speed so we'll make a moment a momentum like eight kilograms times meter per second and we'll say the cue ball okay that that sees a little too big let me draw my ball first the cue ball goes in this direction and usually the cue ball ends up slower than the ball it hit we'll say that this has a momentum of two kilograms times meter okay that doesn't look like an M meter per second and let me just symbolize the collision with this little bang right here so again what we're doing is we're hitting the cue ball which had an initial momentum of 10 kilograms times meter per second into the eight ball and a realistic result would be the eight ball going in this direction at eight kilograms meter per second and the cue ball going in this direction at two kilograms meter per second so how does this verify the law of conservation of momentum? Well, it verifies it whenever we look at vector addition. So let's go ahead and take a look at our initial vector. That is right here, and we can symbolize that by saying it has 10 kilograms per meter per second, or times meter per second. So whenever we add up the two resulting vectors, this one and this one, we should end up with the same thing as this initial vector. What the heck am I talking about? Well, let me show you guys on another slide. So the eight ball, let me just draw this ball again, went in this direction with a momentum of eight kilograms times meter per second. Now the cue ball, remember, whenever you add vectors, you connect them head to tail, would be right there, and it went in this direction with a momentum of two kilograms times meter per second. Now again, whenever you're doing this uh, on graph paper or trying to figure out these things, make sure you draw these to scale. For example, this vector right here would be 8 inches and this vector right here would be 2 inches or centimeters. As long as they're to scale, it doesn't really matter. Now again, what we need to do is in order to find the sum of these vectors, you take the tail of the first one and draw a line to the head of the last one. So this right here would be your resulting vector. Now if we went ahead and measured that we would end up with 10 kilograms times meter per second. Now of course I know that this is not the proper angles 
And this, of course, if we actually measured it, it would not be 10 centimeters or whatever. But that is how you can use vector addition to add up and prove the law of conservation of momentum. And uh, again, like I said, I know that since 8 plus 2, this is not in a straight line, then it wouldn't actually equal 10. But whenever you're figuring this stuff out, you're going to get different values than 8 and 2. But the important thing to remember is you're always going to end up with this momentum. Now, instead of just, you know, adding arrows for fun, what this does, like I said, is it proves that the law of conservation of momentum is valid using vector addition. So, basically, the total momentum of the two resulting vectors equals the initial momentum. So, there you go. So, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, you'll understand now. And in the next video, I'm going to be taking the gun and the bullet problem to a whole nother level. So, again, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.